Today, you guys are all in for a treat. This is a very exciting day because we are going to be taking a deep dive into just about everything digital marketing. And when I say deep dive, we are going to try and give you a quality understanding and explain it in a way that you can understand whether you're an absolute beginner or you've been doing this stuff for 10 years. And if you're on that latter end of the equation, you've been doing this for 10 years, we are still going to provide a lot of valuable information that you may not have understood before and is going to help take your digital marketing game to the next level. This is going to be a super exciting Ask the Experts episode. And uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for tuning in, you guys. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen real fast. All right, here we go. Digital marketing. It says it's an intro, but we are going in depth, you guys. So let's let's get started. First of all, I will make an important note and disclaimer. Proper digital marketing does take a little bit of tech savviness, okay? And, and it doesn't take a ton. We'll try to teach you as much as possible. But if you are somebody who is totally uncomfortable with the internet, um, then ultimately it might be in your best interest to find a person to do digital marketing for you. Uh, just to be entirely honest, part of being a good business owner is knowing your strengths and weaknesses. As a real estate agent, you are a business owner. So if your weakness is in technology, if you get confused by being a Facebook user, that's totally okay. Accepting that as your weakness and outsourcing is a very viable solution. All right, so when you are looking for somebody, a professional, you want to find someone who can build a websites and edit pages. You want to find somebody who is used to pay-per-click marketing, specifically Google ads and Facebook ads. You want somebody that has at least a bit of graphic design experience, which these days, because of Canva.com, if you have not been to Canva, check it out. They make graphic design. They try to simplify the experience, okay? Ideally, you want somebody with Adobe knowledge because Adobe allows you to get into the weeds and do some more specifics. But Adobe requires an entire uh, graphic design degree to be proficient in, where Canva makes everything laid out super simple. Canva is graphic design for non-graphic designers. Check it out. It is a great tool. You want somebody who can do email marketing. Email marketing is super important. All of these things we are going to cover in this presentation, I promise. But this is just the key points that you want to look for in a digital marketer. And then social media is a plus, but it is not more important than the categories above. Now, why do I say this? because there are a lot of facets to digital marketing, but oftentimes social media is the one that is talked about the most. It is hyped up the most, but finding somebody to run your social media account is actually very, very simple, okay? So the things that are above it, having someone build websites, email marketing, those require a little more experience to do proficiently. So. Don't don't fall into a trap because you hear about social media marketing so much. Don't just look for a social media marketer. Look for a robust marketer. Social media will be in their wheelhouse. All right. So why use digital marketing in the first place? Let's start with that, right? Traditional marketing techniques like uh, sending out mailers, you know, buying a billboard, buying your current bench ad, these are still important things, but digital marketing allows you, it gives you an edge to those compared to the tra traditional marketing techniques. So online, you have more specific targeting options, right? If I am buying a TV ad or a bench ad, every single person in the world is going to see it, including 10 year olds who will never buy real estate or who are not in the market, obviously, <laughs> you know, everyone will see it. You are paying for a general population within the area in almost any type of traditional marketing technique. However, 
with online and digital marketing techniques, you can narrow your search. And granted, granted, I'm I'm a real estate agent too, okay? There are RESPA guidelines, you know, you do not want to be uh, targeting targeting in ways that are illegal. But that being said, you have way more targeting options online. Also, you can get analytics. Analytics is super, super important to any marketing or sales strategy because the first time you do something, it may not turn out how you want. If you don't have a way to analyze that campaign, then you cannot make those changes to make it a successful one. You will be stuck in the process of throwing crap at the wall and hoping it works and never actually taking the time to see what about it didn't work. And you need to know what about something doesn't work in order to fix it. Otherwise, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. All right. Lastly, with digital marketing, you have more control over how a customer interacts with your brand. On a bench, you can put your phone number on there, you can put your email on there, that's as far as it goes. On an online advertisement, you can send them to your website where you have specifically crafted messaging that is meant to get that customer excited to talk to you. You have much more control. Okay, and then right here, these are, I mean, these are basically what I just said. The, the thing here that isn't included on the left there is that digital marketing, when done properly, will be cheaper than traditional marketing techniques. For example, I have, I've done plenty of traditional marketing. I am not bashing on traditional marketing, but I can tell you for a fact that running a radio advertisement will cost you a minimum of $5,000. Right. And then how many people do you even get to view or listen to that? Maybe it's 10,000 people. And of those 10,000 people, how many people are actually your target audience? Maybe it's a thousand. Right. So you just paid for a radio ad and a thousand people that you wanted to hear your message. Saw it and it cost you five thousand dollars. Well, online, you can get people to your website for 50 cents per click. And you can target them very, very specifically, right? So if you look at that that way, that same $5,000 budget online can get you 10,000 people that you actually want to see your messaging. 10,000 people versus 1,000 people. I mean, that's a no-brainer. And I use radio advertising, but most traditional marketing uh, techniques will follow the same fate. It is significantly more expensive in general. And it makes sense. Usually it involves printing. It involves something or another. Like there are just more costs associated with those techniques. All right. So this is general marketing advice, but it is super key with digital marketing. Digital marketing and any marketing is all about getting the right message to the right person that should, be, that should be person, not customer. My apologies. At the right time. Every single one of these three steps is very important to consider. And you should know that like, part of having those analytics is in, pl- in place is to make sure that each one of these steps are right. Now, you see this, and it seems extremely simple. It's like, duh, the right message to the right per- person at the right time, that's, that's a no-brainer. But... In reality, these three steps can build you and guide you into having a very high converting sales and marketing process, right? So taking taking five minutes on your own time to think exactly about who your perfect customer is, what exactly they would want to hear, how can you help them in, in and, and then write that out write out your benefits in a way that they easily understand. That is the right message, their benefits. And then at the right time, you know, and this is super key in real estate, right? At the right time, you could have a a person, a single family, uh, mother and father who are perfect candidates to have a new house. But if they are interested in selling at the moment or they're not looking for a new home, you might as well forget about it. 
I mean, talking to them, yeah, maybe you'll build some branding recognition. So when they decide to sell in five years, maybe they'll remember you. But ideally, you want to be talking to people who have a need to move, buy or sell their property right now or very soon. So the right time is a huge factor of all of this. All right. So uh, as a reminder, feel free to write any questions in the chat. We are already moving kind of quickly here and we haven't even gotten into the bulk of the content. So like, we haven't even hit the table of content slide. Okay. <laughs> so let me, let me just put that into perspective, but feel free to ask any questions. Okay. So the goals of digital marketing, and we'll go over this specifically in the advertising in more detail in the advertising section, but the goals of digital marketing are often getting a new customer, obviously, or additional revenues, finding better leads, or even building brand awareness, okay? If you cannot always hit the right customer with the right message at the right time, well, sometimes branding and making yourself more familiar in a community is the intent of a digital marketing campaign. It is still the cheapest way to market yourself as a company. So regardless of whether you're trying to get those final closes or you're trying to further establish yourself as a prominent real estate agent within your town or community, it is the, basically both are viable ways to digital market. All right. So the other goal is to build a of digital marketing is to build an entire pipeline that strategically brings a prospect to your website or landing page where you have more detailed messaging that encourages them to close and become a customer of yours. All right. Like I said, I've been talking for a while for us to not hit this table of contents page yet. But here we are. <laughs> so these are the different categories that we are going to go over within this presentation. I will do them quickly enough where you can understand, but also just know this presentation, actually a more detailed version of this presentation is available to you guys. So, uh, you know, I, I highly recommend that you take notes because it helps ingrain this information into your mind. However, if you do not want to be note taking right now, just go ahead and shoot us an email after the event and ask for this presentation. It is much more detailed. It is in full paragraphs with the knowledge that somebody is going to be reading it as opposed to presenting it. So again, shoot us an email, Nick at New York State MLS. So that is nystatemls.com. Nick at nystatemls.com. Uh, Bruce or Len, go ahead and throw that in the chat for, for those guys, just in case they do want this presentation after the fact. All right, let's get started. So your online presence, super important. Okay, this, this is, these are the fundamentals, but it's really important that you hit this. Your online presence means your Presence on social media it means having your website, having your own domain, making sure you're on Google My Business. Uh, in fact, here we go. So what we would recommend to do to build your online brand, if you have not done these steps, is to purchase yourname.com. Not literally yourname.com, obviously. But for me, nickmacklemurray.com. I actually own the domain. I don't have a website up for it yet because I am no longer... Uh, a contract for hire type of guy. So I took my website down, but I own nickmacklemurray.com. Nobody else can own that. You should go, go to GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatever your preferred domain. We, we have recommendations for you if you want them and buy your domain so nobody else can take it, especially if you have a common name, then you may already not be able to take it. All right, create a proper email address with this. These two things are super inexpensive, but what we mean by that is going to Gmail, going to Microsoft, whatever platform you prefer, and making actually paying to have Nick at nickmacklemurray.com. Okay, this is an extra step, and it isn't entirely required. 
but it looks very professional as an agent to have a, your domain of some sort. So whether it's it, ultimately, you can also be doing it with your company name or your brand name or your team name, right? You guys are agents, so you could be the Mendez team, right? So having something nick at the Mendez team.com, having an email come from that versus Mendez team at gmail.com is way more professional looking and will actually go far in how your customers and your prospects perceive you. All right, create one to two social media accounts. You can do more. You can do more to create it, but we recommend starting slow because to actually build a brand on social media takes more work than it may seem. You have to do, you have to make frequent posts. You should be doing videos, right? A lot of you guys are on social media right now. So I'll, I'll just brief by that. And if you guys have any questions, then let me know. We do talk about social media and growing your social media in, in a few slides here. All right. Creating a free blogging account. Go to activerain.com. Basically build yourself, build your company links. Uh, go, you know, Reddit, Active Rain, uh, Blogger.com, basically creating entities. I'm trying to think of like the very layman's way to put it, but creating different entities and, and putting your company on different platforms is just another way that people can run into your brand for free. Okay. So LinkedIn is a big one, even though that's technically a social media. You know, getting getting more developed on LinkedIn, making sure your company has a LinkedIn page, making sure that you're constantly connecting with people over there. And it's it's important to spread out your brand name as much as possible. And one of the main reasons for this is SEO, search engine optimization. We will also be going over SEO in more detail. I'll let Bruce take that over in a little bit. And then create a Google My Business account by golly gee whiz. How many people miss this is insane because it is incredibly important. Have you ever typed in real estate agent in my area and then all of your competition comes up and you don't understand why? That's because you are not on Google My Business. Google My Business literally takes a handful of minutes to sign up. And then Google will automatically put your name in that hat, okay? And then taking it a step further, having all of your customers review you on Google My Business is huge in, as a real estate professional. If you have 50 five-star reviews in Google My Business as a real estate professional, when anybody in the area looks up real estate agent in Palm in Palm Beach Gardens, right? Wherever you are in the Bronx, New York, you will be one of the first people to come up. Google is basically sending you free business at that point. Google My Business, absolutely huge. Whether you're an agent or you're a tea shop or any, any type of company, Google My Business is a big deal, especially if you're local. All right, so... Website. And we're going to go by these just because looking at the time, I'm already 20 minutes in here. <laughs> so uh, website, you want a website. Okay. Think of it as your digital storefront. It is your brand. It is where you want people to go. So in order to build a proper website, obviously you need to use professional content. You want professional photos of you and your team. You want photos of the area that you're serving. You want people excited. Another thing that, okay, so this is SEO related. We could talk about an SEO. Basically, you want Google to understand and see that your website exists. Once again, so Google sends you free traffic. Google can be your best salesperson if you let it. Um, it allows you to control what you share more on other platforms, okay? So how does it do that? Well, oh, well, it, it allows you to control more because you have different pages that have specific messaging, okay? If you wanna talk about something that's going on in your local community that is a specific event, 
rather than just sending them to your random EXP or Keller Williams landing page that just has your contact information, you can send them to a specific page that is only about that event. And what that does for people, if they see your social media account and you post, hey, look at this cool thing happening downtown tomorrow, and then they click on it and it goes to just your contact information, they're annoyed, they're confused, what the hell, this is not what I signed up for. But if they click on that and then it goes to a page that is directly about that event, that is exactly what they wanted to see. Okay, so owning a website is your best way to create pages and have specific links for everywhere else on the Internet. All right. What your company needs or what your website needs, company name and logo. Okay, that's a no brainer. Your listings, preferably with high res photos. So this uh, you can if you do not already have a feed from your MLS to your website. It is very important for you to do that. On top of that, you should have additional MLS listings that are not from your own company, okay? Because if a buyer, if a potential buyer is looking on your site and they only have five housing options, they may not be interested. They may go away. That is a missed opportunity. If they have a thousand different homes to scroll through, I mean, that's obviously an over-exaggeration in most markets, but if they have a thousand different homes to go to, wow, your website becomes a mini Zillow for them, okay? They have Zillow. People know about Zillow. So if you don't have enough options on your website, then they are just going to bail and go to one of those listing sites that they already know exists, okay? So you need your contact information, your forms, your call to action. That is a big term. CTA, call to action. Every single page on your website should have a call to action. What that means is you put something in place there that is what you want that customer to do. So it may be filling out a lead form, giving you their contact information so you can then call them or email them. That is a call to action, that lead form. It may be on a specific page, you want them to go to a different page. So in that case, the a button that links to that next page is your call to action. Okay. And then the names and photos of your agents, brokers, appraisers. And lastly, landing pages. I talked about this very briefly in the last segment, but every single different type of campaign should have a landing page with that specific messaging on it, okay? So if you're doing a campaign where you're trying to reach out to, you're trying to reach out to people that are moving across states, let's say even more specifically, you have advertisements set up so that anyone who's saying moving to Florida from out of state will be sent to your page you do not want them sent to a general company page, okay? You want them set to a page that talks about moving to Florida from a different state. You want your messaging to relate as closely as possible to the experience that you are advertising to. So those individual landing pages are key. And it's the difference between having a conversion rate that's very low because it's a general p it's a general page with generic information about your company to much higher because it is something it is a page that is created to speak to that specific customer okay every single type of customer that you have every segment every target audience that you have should have its own unique landing page and then obviously at the bottom there, you know, in the real estate industry, we are bound by certain laws, certain advertising laws. We do have to include our licensing data, our brokerage data, all that good stuff. Do not miss that. Obviously, uh, you don't want to get in trouble with the law because you decided to start digital marketing. All right. Mobile first approach for time sensitivity, I will say only this on a mobile first approach people use their phones now 
People use their phones to scroll the internet. It is simple as that. So making sure that you're designing your website so it looks good on a cell phone is important. That is the mobile first approach. Mobile first was created with the idea that you should make your website designed to mobile and then build out what it's going to look like on desktop as opposed to just building your website desktop and then making the mobile version afterwards. Like I said, that was one of those slides where there was a ton of information and I just spoke for 45 seconds on it. If you guys want this presentation, this PowerPoint slide, just let us know. Go ahead and send us an email. All right. So how do you get additional listings? How do you even... Well, I mentioned this earlier, right? You want as many possible listings on your site. And that's called an IDX feed. But what about the opposite? Syndication. This is what your MLS actually does for you, okay? MLSs before the internet age, they would go out, they'd sign you up to newspapers, they'd do all this crazy wild stuff uh, with your property. Nowadays, MLSs, all they do is syndicate. That's really all they do. Because, and, and what that means is you put your property in the MLS, it goes to Zillow, it goes to Realtor.com, it goes to all the big ones, and then boom, that's, that's what your MLS does for you most of the time. Okay, so uh, a side conversation, a little side note, my state MLS will do all of that and syndicate to more platforms than most local MLSs for way less of a price than most local MLSs, but that's not marketing information. So I just wanted to throw that in there because this is a My State MLS presentation. All right, so syndication, making sure your property goes out to the most amount of real estate sites possible. This is key. And um, ultimately, a lot of syndication will fall on your MLS. So really what I would recommend from a marketing perspective, genuinely, not just because I am biased here, but I would highly recommend joining a company like MyState MLS that syndicates to more platforms because sure, you could reach out or you could post individually, you could go to all of these nuanced websites and make your listings, but that, that would take hours. That would take hours for you to do. So using a platform like MyState MLS is super important. And you should also use international sites, okay? Because let's let's be real. The United States real estate market is hot. Even though we've been in this weird market, I don't know, lull, confusing times for the last six months where everyone's like, it's going to crash, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. But the supply and demand just doesn't support that thesis, right? It's a confusing time for real estate. But that doesn't change the fact that the U.S. is a hot market. And there are a ton of international investors and international people that are moving here from different countries, right? Like think about all, think about Stanford, Yale. Do you know how many people those guys accept from China? A lot. There are a lot of students that come in from different countries. And a lot of those students have families that have a lot of money, okay? I actually went to Stanford and I could tell you that I had a lot of Chinese friends there whose parents were super rich. They actually just bought them property when they moved out here. Do not discount international sites because they can get you leads, hands, period. All right. So the other thing is think of it almost like reverse syndication. It's what I was talking about before. It's your IDX stream. It is getting other people's listings onto your website so that potential buyers do not leave your website to go somewhere with more options. Yeah, it's 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 kind of easiest to think of that as reverse syndication. There are some technical differences, but that's just the simplest way to think of it. So your IDX feed can be purchased. You can most MLSs will give IDX feeds out if you are not involved with an MLS that shares an IDX feed to your website. This is another reason why you would potentially use my state MLS, okay? And, and like I said, this genuinely is not me trying to promote the company. This is me giving my best advice. A company like MyState will help you with these two factors.
All right. And yes, so we went, we didn't go over much detail about website design. If you guys need websites or have more information, we can help you out with that. All right. So now let's talk advertising. So let me check. Let me check my time here. 30 minutes. Okay. One second. Take a sip of water. Doing a lot of talking here. Now take a sip of coffee because I'm addicted. All right. Advertisements, pay-per-click advertisements. First of all, it is the quickest way to actually gain traffic to your website. We talked about a handful of different methods very, very briefly, and we'll talk about it more like signing up to Google My Business, getting on different blogs, using social media. These are all ways that you can send website traffic to your site. But if you are a new website, that doesn't have much credibility or history in Google's eyes or Bing's eyes or some of these companies that you're doing SEO for, pay-per-click will always be the best way because you are paying per click. You can get as many clicks as you want in a single day and you can make it cost 50 cents to a dollar if you're good at setting up these campaigns. Um, and like I said, you can target people very, very specifically. So within these campaigns, you want to make sure that you are targeting as much as possible. So you are not paying for somebody. You, you do not want to pay for a 12-year-old to visit your website and obviously not buy a home. <laughs> there aren't many 12-year-olds that are in the market genuinely to buy a home. Okay, so... It is the fastest way. So with pay-per-click, I highly recommend Google ads and Facebook ads are obviously common. Bing ads. There are a ton of different platforms that you can use. And we'll actually go over these in the next slide, the different platforms. So what I will say is that there is a lot of hype around Facebook ads um, because Facebook has done a good job at building hype around their ads. However, personally for real estate, I prefer search engine ads like Google ads or Bing ads to social media advertisements. Why is this? Can anybody in the chat take a guess why this is? Remember the golden rule of marketing. No, nope, anyone? I, I can't even see the chat. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys took, took your hat. I'm on the chat. You're good. Okay. So. The reason why, in my eyes, search engine ads are superior in real estate to other, other social media-based pay-per-click advertising is because of the golden rule that you're getting the right message to the right person at the right time. That is the key to a search engine ad versus a social media ad. On a social media ad, you are being shown you can get the right message to the right person but they're just scrolling, okay? You have your target audience. You can target them perfectly. You can make your message perfect, but people see it because they are scrolling through social media even. They, the odds of somebody having on their mind that they want to buy a new house when they see your Facebook ad is low. It's, it's as simple as that. Where with Google you can target your keywords to only show advertisements based on those keywords. So you could, you could only show your ad if someone types into Google, moving to Florida, moving to New York, okay? These are keywords that guarantee that that is what is on their mind. So it can, a search engine ad will give you the time you could, for both types of advertisements, you can get the right message to the right person, okay? But with search engine ads, the right time is something that you can actually account for. You cannot do that in social media ads. All right. That's basically what I just said. And so when you're going to spend money on pay-per-click, always make sure that you have analytics in place. You want to have analytics in place, which these platforms do for you about the ad itself. How good does the ad perform? Do people see the ad and click on it? But you also wanna make sure you have analytics on the page 
and the process that you are sending people to. You guys would be amazed at how many companies that I've worked for that just keep on changing the advertisement. They're like, oh, what's wrong with my ad? I'm not getting customers. What's wrong with my ad? Like, let me get a new picture in there. Let me change the words up a little bit. But the actual problem itself is the landing page afterwards. They're just driving themselves crazy, switching the advertisement over and over and over and over again. But in all reality, what they needed to switch the whole time was the page that the advertisement was sending them to. Okay, so with the page analytics, you can, I would recommend using Google Analytics and, and we'll recommend a more exhaustive list later in the presentation. But I would use Google Analytics to see the conversion rate of your landing page. And then I would couple that with a platform like Hotjar that's going to allow you to analyze the actual content of your page. So you not only know, does the page convert, does it work, but you also know where on the landing page people are leaving the page. So you can adjust and update accordingly, okay? Proper digital marketing, becoming an expert digital marketing, digital marketer is just thinking of it like a science. Okay, just breaking everything down to its smallest point and analyzing it and taking everything and tweaking it where it needs to be tweaked until you have the highest conversion rate possible. So, sorry, took a sip of water. So for this advertisement, right, you could do modifications for months, but then once everything is in place, and you're getting a positive ROI, which you can get great ROIs from these pay-per-click advertisements. I'm telling you, there are some companies who spend $5,000 and make $100,000 off of that, right? So ultimately, knowing what part of the process and controlling that whole line and making sure your website is included and adjusting accordingly, right? Only once you have positive ROIs, then do I recommend you switch up so start with a test budget when you're doing pay-per-click advertising. And then once you get a proven ROI and proven conversions for the money that you're spending, then ramp it up, then put some real money into it. Okay. You don't want to, we're not digital marketing to waste money. If we wanted to waste money, then we'd be looking at traditional marketing techniques, to be honest with you. We're digital marketing because we want to be successful and we want every dollar that we spend to turn into more than a single dollar. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. So here are the different advertising types, search engine, social media, remarketing. So remarketing, what that is, is you could do it through Google. You can do it through YouTube, Amazon. That means that you are re-showing your messages to people who have visited your website recently or in the past. Okay. Re retargeting, remarketing. It has a few different terms. Okay. And then video ads, email, you guys get the gist. And this, I kind of just spoke about a little bit already. So the different stages of an online advertisement, you, this is key. It's key to think of your digital marketing as different stages because then you can analyze and you can adjust appropriately. Okay. So your ad, your ad should have a hook that intrigues people. It should be high quality in its content and it should have verbiage, which uh, for whatever reason, marketing decided to uh, use the word copy and copyright as verbiage. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like just extra terminology to make digital marketers sound fancy, but all they mean is verbiage. <laughs> but you do, you want to make sure that your ad gets your message across as clearly as possible. You also want to use as few words as possible. This is something that it actually took me a long time to, to do myself because my background is in philosophy, right? The world of a thousand commas per sentence. Okay. So being able to adjust my writing style to be direct and punchy on landing pages and advertisements was a challenge, but it's very important. It is very important. You want it to be so simple that a third grader could understand what your ad is saying. 
All right, your landing page, where people are going on your website from that advertisement. It should have a hook as well. It should focus on the benefits of what you offer, not the features. This, this is a really, really big one. And it's a mistake that a lot of companies make. A lot of companies, especially technical companies and tech companies, they get excited about what they do better than everyone else. So much so that they just list it all. And like, let's say an iPhone, you know, they, it's like having a landing page that's just all about specs. And they're like, oh yeah, we use the best core processor and, you know, we have, but they, there are plenty of things that they could label. There are plenty of technical features that may be better than the competition, but most consumers don't care about that. Most consumers care about why that helps them. So take a, take a few moments and think of the different features that you have. If you have any features, now this is real estate uh, webinar. So ultimately you guys probably have benefits on mine in the first place, but uh, you know what? Let me even use it. Let me even use a real estate example. Okay. Rather than like a home, just saying this home is X, Y, Z, and all of the above. It's so perfect. You want to write your verbiage to try and make them envision themselves in that home. Like, why do I care that the doors or that there's a giant window in the living room? You know, that as a point doesn't mean that much. But what I do care about as a consumer is the beautiful light that shines through or the sunset and how beautiful it is on the mountain range, blah, 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 blah. Right. Think of the benefits, not the features. You want a low cost call to action on your initial landing page. Okay. So this is, this is also a really important point. A low cost call to action is something like just give us your information so I can call you. Okay. Or like here, I'll give you something for free. I'll give you a free report on your home. That's a good one in real estate. I'll give you a free estimate on how much your home is worth. You want low cost call to actions instead of high cost call to actions because at this point, they've only seen your advertisement and your landing page. This person does not fully trust you yet as a company. So you want to make them, give them an entryway into trusting you. Okay. So when I was taught this, I, I was taught a kind of brute example. So, so my apologies if this is uh, uh, brute, I, I don't think it is, but let's say that I am a single gentleman and there's a woman that is standing over there at a stoplight every day. And I just think she's beautiful and I want to try and get her on, go on a date with her. Okay. So if I walk up to her and say, Hey, marry me, she's going to run away. <laughs> I mean, she's going to, she's not going to look back. Even if the stoplight is still has her stopping, she is going to run into traffic to try and get away from me. Okay. That is me as a business asking someone to pay me $7,000. That is me as a business selling my most expensive product without them even knowing who I am. All right, but I'll have at least slightly better odds, right? Obviously, when you're talking about uh, this exact scenario, it's not, it's not as cut and dry, but I'll have slightly better odds if I say, hey, let me just like take you, hey, you wanna get a coffee sometime? I'll pay for it totally free. It's right over here. It's a public environment. Nothing bad can happen to you, right? Like it's a low cost offer. You're going to have a lot better chance of them saying yes to that than asking for straight up marriage, right? And then as they're more familiar with your brand, after you've got bought them coffee three times and then you bought them dinner and then, you know, three years later, which obviously with a customer, we don't want to wait three years. Then you ask for marriage, okay? <laughs> so it's, it's starting off slow, having a low cost call to action at first. All right, so once you have leads, you need to build your own follow-up process. Do not let those leads sit because those leads are super important. They've already decided that they care enough about your product or about what you pitched on your landing page. They already decided that they cared enough to give you their information, okay? Follow up with them. If you are ignoring your, your sign-up leads, if you are ignoring your internet leads 
as a salesperson, as a real estate agent, you are 100% missing the ball. But I doubt you, I mean, you guys are taking time to be here. So I doubt any of you guys are people that wouldn't follow up on your leads. All right, and then building out your sales process, okay? We have some recommended sales processes and some resources. So go ahead, shoot us a message. We can help you figure one out. But ultimately a sales process is, you know, you make that first call. How many times do you follow up? How long do you wait to follow up? How, how, many, how many different forms are you reaching out to them on? Do you call once and then send an email and then wait two days if you left a voicemail and don't hear back and then call again and then send another email? Right? Write this stuff down. So you can actually follow that process yourself and adjust it, basically create your its own sales process pipeline and do exactly what I'm talking about here. Where is it not working? Where is it working? And analyze, adjust until you find that perfect center balance that gets you a customer. All right. So let me check how I'm doing on time real fast. Oh. Not very good. It is already 1050. Bruce, we are not even at SEO. Um, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> we'll be making many more of these. I already kind of disclaimed that information in the chat. I said, you know, we only have so much time available to us. We could do this for like five days in a row and still have stuff to talk about. So, um, 100%. Um, exactly what Bruce is saying. I'm trying to give as brief but as descriptive as info as possible, each one of these topics we could talk about for an hour, to be honest with you. Social media marketing, for example, I, I have built many different pages that have had 25,000 all the way up to 50,000 followers within a year. Okay. And these are genuine followers that are actually engaging. I don't buy bots because bots are actually... Uh, destructive to your ability to grow on social media platforms. Take that as a note if you are or have considered buying bots. Um, one of the key algorithm values that social media companies use is your amount of engagement compared to your amount of followers. So buying bots can be the death blow to an account because suddenly you have 20,000 followers but are only getting three likes on your photos, Instagram is, or whatever platform is not going to push that, is not going to share that, right? And in fact, with social media marketing, I, I don't even have it included in this presentation, but I could talk about engagement marketing, something that you can do absolutely free every single day. And it's how I grew, how I grew social media pages for companies so quickly within a year. It's just frequent and consistent engagement marketing. It does wonders. We'll talk about that on a different webinar. Right now for social media, all I want to say is there are a lot of social media gurus out there that are pitching the viral social media approach. Have you guys ever been to a social media webinar and they tell you, make content, make a video a day, get excited. You know, I'm, I actually have met Tristan Ahumada a handful of times with Lab Code Agents. And this is, I've seen him speak. This is his whole spiel. It is make as much content as possible, make good content. He'll tell you to find video editors on Fiverr so the content can be higher quality. These are all good points, okay? If you want to try and build a social media presence and go viral, you have to do that. But the reality is you could be putting 20 hours per week into it for three years and never go viral. Okay, these social media platforms have people already who are in those top spots and breaking into a viral spot, building a million follower type of account, that is not easy. And all of these people who push that and push that and push that and push that, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to spend 20 hours a week on this and then get burned out after six months because the results aren't showing for themselves. Maybe you'll get a few messages from people that like your videos, but that in, in itself is not converting to new business. Okay. Now, if you like social media, I'm not telling you not to do social media, but I'm telling you to take the practical approach, which means that every you're posting as much as you want, right? You are 
if you really love social media, you can post multiple times a day. That is part of the viral approach. So good for you. But the practical approach is about making sure that when a new person lands on that social media page, all of your links are pinned to the top of the page. You basically to make sure that there is a good chance as best of chance possible that they are sent to a website, to your website, that they will actually convert into a customer. Okay. So the practical approach of social media, it is all of these things that are on the viral approach, right? Making a ton of content, doing all that, right? That in itself is, is part of the practical approach, but the practical approach is about setting up the after and, and understanding what you want somebody to do once they become your Instagram follower, once they join your Facebook page or like your Facebook page, right? Understanding what you want them to do and how you're going to do that, right? The practical approach is messaging your followers saying, hey, I'm a real estate agent in this area. If you ever need my services, please sign up for this mailing list, right? The practical approach is all about how you actually get them from your webs or from your social media page to actually becoming a customer, right? It is so much better to have 500 followers that you get four deals from than to have 5,000 followers that you get one deal from. Isn't that the point of, of why you're social media marketing your business anyways? To get business? And ultimately that is, it's not as much about the content as you may think. It's about the reaching out. It's about the afterthought that you put into it, okay? All right, 1055. So leading social media outlets. I'll wrap up on social media. And dang, it's such a shame because I was, I was so excited about hearing Bruce talk on SEO. He is, um, like I said, he helped find, find a large SEO company. So he has a ton to say on SEO, and it's really great stuff. Um, but... You know, here are some leading social media outlets. You guys all know it because you're users. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. LinkedIn is really important because even though it doesn't have that many active users, you can actually sort and search for different people based on job position, which is very valuable in a lot of cases, right? On Facebook, you can't search like business owners near me. <laughs> Nothing's going to come up or it's just going to be pages. Where LinkedIn, if you type in business owner, then, you know, thousands and upon thousands of different business owners will be there for you to connect to and reach out to and prospect to. All right. And because of the timing here, oh, man, kills me to do this. So sorry again, Bruce. We will revisit right. SEO in the next Ask the Experts section. And like I said, all this whole slide plus more is available for you guys. Um and yeah, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share and I will open it up to any questions. Can we go into LinkedIn more in depth next time? Of course, of course. And in fact, what I will even say about it right now, uh, Seattle from Seattle, <laughs> which is just, man. I like that name. If your name genuinely is Seattle from Seattle, which I'm 99% certain it's not, your parents did you good. Anyways, <laughs> um, no, no, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just messing around. <laughs> um, so yeah, with LinkedIn marketing, it's really, really important that if you want to target specific people. So as a real estate agent, um, it's it's actually more important for almost somebody targeting real estate agents, right? Like if I had a real estate marketing company where I built websites, I would want to type in real estate agents, Miami, real estate agents, X, Y, Z, and just go through and connect with as many people as possible and then send messages to the ones that connect back and make sure that I'm posting and content. Um, that's a super, super brief answer, but we'll go more into depth on LinkedIn next time for sure. And Next time we'll start with SEO from Bruce, so uh, <laughs> so we don't miss out on that. All right, any other questions here? Let's see. Okay, we got Bruce. Will there be a part two? Of course. Oh, Bruce, you've been on top of this questions. Nice. Do you, do we do this weekly? That also is a great question. So we've been doing it monthly up to this point. 
we have been wanting to do it bi-weekly. So if, if there is a lot of demand for this, then we could definitely do, do it more frequently. But as of right now, it is scheduled monthly. So if you go to, it is always on Thursdays. We're also, we're also open to changing it. Look, this is, look, this is, we want, we want to give people, we want to give people what they want. Okay. And here's the thing. We got a lot of stuff going on over here. We're, we're pretty busy people, but being a digital marketer, you're behind the scenes. So Thursdays, Tuesdays, tell us what you guys want. Ultimately, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I'm saying that, but uh, if you change the time for 2 a.m., heck yes. That sounds genius. That sounds like the, uh, it'll bring me back about seven years, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that sounds amazing. Um, okay, so when will part two be scheduled? So right now you guys can go to uh, www.mystatemls.com slash ask the experts. Freaking Len, right on top of it. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> and oh, so so Diana, it's interesting. Like, like you're saying, I actually uh, just moved here from California. So I understand that 11 a.m. out here on Eastern is actually pretty early over there. And it's something that we've been we've been contemplating on on going a little bit later for the for those purposes. So, uh, all right. Any other last minute questions before we wrap this up and call it call it a day? Did, did can you go ahead and put in the chat or like do a little hand emoji if you think you learned something? Nice. That's cool. We got to learn a lot. We got a great thank counted. you. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Very cool. I'm glad that you guys got value and we can go so much more in depth. So make sure to uh, send any emails if you have any questions. And yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in.